Black Face Salutations! Today I am talking about misconceptions that people might have about makeup. There's a few different directions I could go here, but today I'm focusing on misconceptions that makeup wearers might have, or potential makeup wearers, and not what some dude bro named Chet thinks about makeup and tells everybody who never asked him. And no offense to anybody in Chet, just a name I picked. So depending on how interested you are in makeup and how much makeup related content you follow online, you might already be aware of some of these things. But you also might be watching this because you know me, so <laughs> hello friend, thank you for tuning in. Um, hopefully this is informative and interesting for everybody. One of the first things I thought of when I decided to make this video was the idea that pumping your mascara will get more goop onto the wand and that that's somehow a good thing. No, uh, what pumping does is dry out your mascara because you're pushing air into the tube. So if your mascara is super liquidy, then by all means do that to help it get more usable. But if it's a normal mascara, it's gonna dry out on its own over time anyway, so don't make it worse. <laughs> and really, having a whole bunch of goop on your mascara wand tends to lead to those like clumped together like five mega lashes instead of you know having fanned out normal looking eyelashes that most humans have. So if you do need to get more mascara goop onto your wand because your tube is running low or something, then you can kind of swirl it around or warm it up by putting it under your arm while you're continuing to do something else to get ready. But generally, don't pump the mascara wand and do use a lash comb. Another classic misconception is that wearing makeup will break you out and foundation is bad for your skin. No. <laughs> That's been going around for so many years, but no. <laughs> Obviously, everyone's skin is different, and some people have issues with certain ingredients or formulas, but in general, it's not going to cause problems. If you do notice pimples or irritation happening, then check out the ingredients of what you've been using, because you might have a sensitivity to something like silicones or fragrances or certain kinds of plants. As long as you're able to figure out what it is that's causing the problems, then you can avoid that ingredient in other things that you buy. It's really just important to moisturize before you put your foundation on, find a foundation that works with your skin type, and then take it off before you go to sleep. Always wash your face before bed, never sleep in your makeup. Very important and actually true. Back in the days of frosty light pink lipstick, the makeup sold in drugstores was not great. <laughs> there were some good products scattered around, but a lot of it was disappointing. But these days, the drugstore has really upped its game, and there's some awesome stuff out there that won't make you wince when you see how much it costs. Some drugstore products are kind of getting pricey, but some of them are still staying, you know, decently affordable. And you also, assuming we can go to stores again in the future, have the ability to be holding a product in an Ulta store and look up the reviews either on like Ulta's website or on the Temptalia blog or watch a YouTube video and just see what other people are saying about how that product performs and then you can know whether or not you want to get it. It's so cool! You don't need to limit yourself to what Sephora sells, especially since a higher price tag is not a guarantee that the product will be good. Seriously, don't be afraid to give the cheap stuff a chance, it can be really awesome. This is something that I mentioned in my video about wearing colorful makeup, but there's this rule decided by fashion magazines, probably, that once you're of a certain age, you need to only wear sophisticated colors and never touch a sparkle again. After you blow out those birthday candles, there's no fun allowed. You must dress like a member of the Boyle family and your red lipstick will be confiscated. I don't get it. Shimmer can emphasize wrinkles and skin texture sometimes, but who cares? <laughs> wrinkles aren't something to be ashamed of, and neither is having gray hair. They're just part of life. <laughs> Idris Elba has wrinkles, and Meryl Streep has wrinkles, and people still love them. And honestly, if you think having wrinkles means you're ugly, then you're calling James Buchanan Barnes ugly, and Captain America will come punch you for that. Wrinkles just mean that you've been living for a while, and there's no age limit on doing your makeup the way that you want to and however makes you happy. If you come find me in 50 years and tell me I need to stop wearing shimmery purple eyeshadow, I'm gonna take my walking stick and hit you in the shin. Something that not everybody realizes is that makeup expires. Powders will tend to last a pretty long time, uh, depending on their formula and if you keep your brushes clean or not, <laughs> but liquids and creams are a bit more risky. They tend to expire faster than the powders do. Um, and the amount of time things will last depends on their ingredients, the container they're in, where you use to apply it, where you store it, and just a whole bunch of different factors. But the best way to prolong your makeup is to use clean brushes whenever you apply it, or clean your fingers before you apply it if you're using your fingers, and keep it in a cool, dry place and not in the bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom has humidity and particles of grossness in the air, and it's just not a great place to be putting your makeup. And a great way to make sure that your makeup doesn't have a premature death is to make sure that your pets and or toddlers can't get to it, because they sure love to destroy stuff. <laughs> 
Somewhere on the product, there will be a little jar picture that shows you about how long it'll last after you open it. Um, it might not be on the physical product itself, it might have been on like the cardboard packaging that you threw out, but you can look up how long things are supposed to last. And you can play it safe and toss things after that date goes by, or use a judgment to determine whether or not it's still okay to keep using. Because this is the only face you get and you want to be cautious, but you also don't want to waste your money, so... You know, just look for changes in texture, smell, color, performance, and anything that seems kind of off. And if you're not sure about something, then you can try looking it up or just be safe and toss it. If there's one thing that you pay attention to expiration-wise, make it your mascara. Because you're only really supposed to use a mascara tube for a few months before you toss it. And if it starts smelling weird, because I've noticed that mascaras, when they get old, they have like a definite change in smell. So when you get to that point, just buy a new tube. Sometimes if you're watching a tutorial or you find a picture diagramming how to apply certain makeup, you might think that you need to go and buy that specific makeup that the influencer was using to make it look the same on your face. But that's not true. Buying the exact products that somebody is using does not guarantee that it'll turn out the same on your face as it did on theirs. If you don't have the exact shade of pink that somebody's using, just use a shade of pink that you do have and it'll probably be good enough. Um, and some people will plug the brushes that they're using for their tutorials and give you a discount code so you can go buy the same brushes, <coughs> Morphe. But honestly, your technique matters a lot more than what specific brushes you're using for the most part. And sometimes you can even just use your fingers because fingers are free and pretty much everybody has them. When I'm looking on Pinterest for makeup inspiration, I often end up seeing a lot of the same things repeating in almost every look. There's black eyeliner wing and false eyelashes and eyebrows that look either too perfect to be real or very, very fluffed. <laughs> Since I don't really like doing any of those things, I try to picture the rest of the look with my uncurlable eyelashes and eyebrows that I mostly leave alone. The way I do my makeup isn't necessarily trendy or, you know, what all the Instagram people are doing, but it's the way that I want to do it and that's why I do it. <laughs> Um, it's fine to, you know, take inspiration from other people, but you should always be yourself and, you know, follow trends if you want to, but don't feel like you need to just to fit in. You have preferences and that's totally fine. Um, and also, unless the tutorial that you're following was made by your identical twin, which would be super rad, I would love that, um, your face and that person's face are gonna be different. So what flatters their facial structure might not look the same on yours, and maybe you want to put your blush somewhere different or do a different eyeshadow shape. So don't be afraid to adapt tutorials to fit your own face and preferences. Something to remember while you're scrolling through social media photos is that so much of what you see on Instagram is not reality. This goes for Instagram as a whole, but especially when it comes to beauty, because people will Photoshop their pictures to be just right before they post them. They'll blur their skin, adjust the colors, use a filter, sharpen this, erase that, pinch their nose, expand their lips, Perhaps even Photoshop a designer's logo all over their eyelid and pretend it was done with makeup until somebody calls them out for lying about it. It's a mess. <laughs> Some people will get procedures or fillers done and then claim that the change you're noticing is because of some vitamin or skincare product or something else they want to sell you. I'm genuinely worried about all the teenagers who may not realize how faked and tweaked so many things are on Instagram. Nobody looks like that. Even the person who posted the picture doesn't look like that. Humans have imperfections, so we shouldn't be photoshopping ourselves into plastic aliens. One of my favorite things about makeup is you can get creative and really express yourself if you want to. I like to match my makeup to what I'm wearing, a holiday that's coming up, something that I'm doing that day, or just whatever else I feel like, basically. And on that note, it's totally fine to match your makeup to your clothes, and I don't know why people say you shouldn't do that, because... It makes sense to match what you're wearing. Anyway, uh, back in February, when it was still okay to have people come to your house, I was going to be learning about making chocolates, so I had a chocolatey brown smoky eye and chocolatey brown lipstick, because I thought it was you know, thematically appropriate. And my husband said that I looked a little bit emo, and he wasn't entirely wrong. <laughs> Dark colors stand out pretty intensely against my skin, and it honestly wasn't a super flattering look for someone who by default looks sickly enough that people are sometimes concerned about my well-being. I have had to assure somebody that I was not going to faint and that was just the way my face looked before, which was a very fun conversation. <laughs> Most people will stick to colors in their makeup that will complement their skin tone and help them feel more attractive and just generally enhance their features because that's usually what the goal of makeup is, is, you know, to feel pretty. 
Um, but it's also just fun to kind of throw all that out the window and do weird things sometimes. <laughs> I think taking a stage makeup class in college really helped me get comfortable with just having weird stuff going on in my face. Because after you've put a fake beard on, lime green eyeshadow doesn't seem that far-fetched anymore. <laughs> So that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video, and I really hope it was interesting for you and maybe you learned something. Um, if there's something that you want me to do for a future video or something else you want me to talk about, then please let me know. And until next time, stay safe, wash your hands, and keep smiling.